about two months ago, about two months ago, I built a crane across the pool. So, I can easily be hooked up in the crane, lower down in the water. I said, my God. He, I said, I said, I said, even with that, what if he slips out of the back? The crane I said, God, what is this? Anyway, I went to my room to change because he has a nice hot water pool there. Covered pool, beautiful, beautiful house, beautiful place. And uh, I went to change and I came back out. I took a long time to change. I was praying. I was praying. And I went out and said, I said, Mr. Alvin, let's go again. Let us go through just for the last. He said, Pastor Kelly, I told you already, the wife and myself didn't go to bed until two this morning. And we understand clearly what you are saying. We want to be baptized in Jesus' name. I said, God. I held on to his, his wheelchair. And I had, I had the pictures, I have it on tape. And I started to push the wheelchair slowly up to the pool. Talking to him. And on my way up to the pool, there was a, a knock on the door. And the wife rushed to the door, so I stopped and waited. And she rushed back in and said, Alvin, guess what? The man who you have been trying to reach for the past month he is here. This was the man who built the crane over the pool. And he was trying to make contact with him for the past month and couldn't make contact with him. The man came and he said, you know, I was on a mission to do a job. And it's like somebody turned my wheels into your yard. I don't know why I'm here. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, God, you're good. This is, must be you. And so the man came and he, and, and he hooked him up. And lower him in the water. The man jumped in the pool in his shoes and his clothing, his wallet in his pocket, everything. And even with that, I was praying. I said, God, please let it go right. And we lower him down in the pool. Hallelujah. And as we lower him in the pool, I said, God, I can't believe that you, you took me from Montego Bay to Orlando. Why couldn't you use somebody in Orlando to do this? I want to tell a friend, the Lord has a job for every one of us. We need to listen to the voice of God. And when God speaks to us, we need to step out upon his promises. If it even means that we're going to lose our life. We should submit ourselves to God. And so we lower Brother Alvin down in the pool and baptize him in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, what a feeling. What a joy. On my way out of the pool, his wife said, Pastor, stop. I want to be baptized in Jesus' name also. Oh, friends, I want to tell you, the word is waiting for you. The word is waiting to hear the message preach. And they're waiting for you to come and knock on their door. In closing, in closing, we were asked to pastor King's Chapel Church. And, uh, oh, never been through anything like this in all my life. The first two months 
fact, Pastor Bartlett came to see me in the hospital. <laughs> the first two months there, I suffered an heart attack. And I was in the hospital. And Pastor, I remember you came at about 10 o'clock at night with the board members to pray with me there in the hospital. I said, God, what is this? Then three months down the road, on my way from Bible study, stop at my gate. A gunman came to lie in the street. He took my wife's car. He took my money. He took everything. Oh, God. I called Bishop Smith. I said, Bishop Smith, I'm going. I don't think I can go through anymore. I'm leaving the church, Bishop. Too much problems. Then my son at school in Kingston, Daddy, I was down crossroads. Gunmen held me up, took my phone, my money. I said, my God, what is this? My son in Montego Bay coming from school, broad daylight. They sticked him up and took what he had. I said, no, it's not real. <laughs> what is this? Then, about October, November, there about, I will... I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. A lever of 38. 39 should have been 4. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. In fact, in 2002, my wife had breast cancer. And I said, God, after all that I have done for you, I said, God, when the doctor told me I stopped on the highway back to Montego Bay, and I wept bitterly, I cried. I said, God, why are you doing this to me? After all that I have done. But the Lord doesn't make a mistake. My wife was diagnosed 2002 with breast cancer. She's alive today. Not on any medication. I was diagnosed with aggressive prostate cancer. A tumor. That was moving so fast. But well, thank God, 2006 December, I'm alive today. And no medication. There's no trace of cancer in my body. My prostate lever is 0.00. I want to tell you today that the God who we serve, He is a great God. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. There's no God like my God. There's no God to be compared with my God. He has never failed me yet. He cannot fail and he will never fail. I want to tell you today, whatever your problem is, whatever it is, God is here and he can heal you. He can deliver you. I'm closing. Whatever the problem is. You don't have to go outside there. Look for a partner. At a married couple's banquet. Singles and married couple's banquet last week. A sister was praying. Pastor Barlett. And this will be good for you. I know when it comes to jokes, you're number one. <laughs> While she was praying, she said, God... Oh, God, let this be the last singles banquet that I'll be attending. Oh, God, I want a, I want a husband. A 
live too long without a husband, Lord. And she was praying and asking God for a husband. I want to tell you, friends, you can get every single thing in the church. God has a hole in the bush for you. So you don't have to go home there to look for one. I said, God has one right here for you. It's just that what you're doing when God give you one. You said, God, I don't want that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. One brother went down to the prayer room and he started to pray. I said, God, you know how it is. As a man, I want a wife. And he said, God, let it be when I get up off my knees, God. The first person I see coming down the step to the prayer room, let her be the one. And when he got up off his knees, there came down a sister. Oh, God. And if I was in Montego Bay and call her name, you, 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 would, you would know. But he said, he said, God, no. No, no. Not that one. God, you make a mistake. Oh, friends, I want to tell you. Oh, there's everything in the church. Why should you leave the church? Why should you go there? Support your church. Give to your church. Pay your tithes. One tenth belongs to God. And I promise you, I promise you that God will take care of you. I did a survey at the church. And the persons who pay their tithes, genuine tithe payers. Now, I'm not talking about persons who give up money. We have so many persons who give a money, put a money in there. I'm talking about 10% of your income, your increase, your income. I've never until today seen one of those persons coming for a loan to the church. Everybody who comes are those who don't pay their tithes. I've never seen a tight pair, an honest tight pair, come to the church for a loan. I want to tell you, friends, if you do your part, God will do his part. God will bless you that your storehouses is going to fade to the brim and run it over. But when you rob God, when you rob God, when you rob God, don't worry. You're going to be in trouble. Did I say don't worry? You must worry. You're going to be in trouble. God bless you. Let's stand, everyone. Just close your eyes for a little. If, if it's possible for you not to move too much, stay where you are. Just close your eyes. I, all I did was to ask Pastor Kelly to talk about his experiences in Belize. I didn't tell him what to say. I know that there are persons here. You know that the call of God is on your life. I don't know what God is calling you for. Maybe you don't know. But I, I know that there are people here who feel that God
God is calling you. We live in an atmosphere where if you speak about this, even apostolic people will say you're foolish. When people speak about the call of God. You know, people feel that they are foolish. And certainly there are people who make a mockery of it. But I wonder if today, if you feel a strong call of God, you don't know exactly what it's for, but you just feel that you're not an ordinary person. There is something that God would have you to do. I want to invite you to this altar today. I'm not asking you to manufacture something. I'm asking you if you genuinely feel it. If you don't feel it, it doesn't mean that anything is wrong with you. Just feel that tug of God. From I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I didn't Something said to me, I want you to be different. I felt it. I don't know where it came from. I felt it. When I was very young, I remember Sister Rushton said to me, Brother John, there's a call of God on your life. And it's not a call to be an evangelist. There's a pastoral call on your life. I laughed her to scorn. I said something must be wrong with this lady. Poor me. Anybody here feel it? Any young man here feel a call of God on your life? Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God, oh God, nobody really understands, nobody really understands. The call of God is not given to perfect people, it's not given to people who have it all together, it's given to people who have issues in their life, who have failures in their life. If call of God is without repentance. Anybody in the balcony feel the call of God today? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord. We must witness 